Good morning. I'm Judy Gula from Artistic Artifacts in Alexandria, Virginia, and it is Saturday morning, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. We are in Virginia, so we're on the East Coast. Um, we have our regular 9.30 Facebook Lives weekly, so we're glad that you're here to join us today. And I think there's some exciting news. Connecting, hold on. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Net exciting announcements that we want to make for you. Um, let's see, do I do it at the beginning or do I do it later at the end? I'll do it at the beginning. You don't want to wait. So, our beautiful spirit dolls, we allow, we donated them, Sharon, Chris, and I, to be used to raise money for India. So, India is still. And, and many countries now are going back. Um, had COVID is is now closing some other countries. We were just told this morning that Saigon is closed, totally locked down. India is, is of course had been um, devastated, and we have many connections there as well. So we did um, allow the. Um, we, we donated our dolls that we made that with the TAP transfer, transfer artist paper, that uh, we did the book review with. So we showed how to use them and, and use Leslie Riley's guidance in her uh, brand new book and used her new launch of transfer artist paper. So you could enter, um, make a donation of $10, and for every $10 you donated, it gave you a choice in a raffle for a doll. Okay? So we've done this before. We're probably going to do it for Christmas stockings when we have those in the holiday season as well. So watch for those. And we, we as a company, as a business, uh, as my, my team players, we all donated our time and our supplies to help raise money for whatever our choice of uh, charity is at that time. Okay, okay, I know, I know, get to the names. Okay. I'm gonna start with mine. So this doll, her name is Sheba, and she was won by Kimberly Barcello. Okay, so Kimberly, what we need you to do is email us with your current address and phone number, and we will ship your doll if you're not local. Did I pick the wrong one? No, but we, we have all their info because it was all done online. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we have your address. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, maybe I need more coffee. Okay, so we, uh, we have Kimberly, so we will take care of that. <laughs> And let's see, we have Chris's Painter Muse. And this was won by Anne Quandy. So she won that. All right. And Juanita, which is woman in Bahasa, I think. I'm probably mutilating that along with everybody's names. And this is one by Allison Schockner. And Ocean Goddess by Sharon. Was won by Sharon Ray. And then Jane, uh, which is the one I made, was won by Lauren Crooks. Okay. And our beautiful son was won by Jill Mendelson. All right. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, for participating in our fundraiser. We truly appreciate it. And it just means that Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds has an international reach. Um, and we, we appreciate your support there. So I'm going to carefully put those dolls elsewhere. Okay, so today 
we said we're going to um, show you a few gifts that we think you could make for the holidays or you could make any time during the year. The first thing that we have are pillowcases. And these are um, holiday oriented new fabrics. And I think that we had, we did have them in the newsletter. And we also will have a link to the tutorial that was, these are these burrito pillowcases, very easy to use. They're great, great for gifts, great for parties and everybody can pick their own fabric. So this one is Fabulous Cats. These are hilarious. So and it, it's um, a basic Dear Stella, I think, or a blender. Dear Stella is the cats. Serenity. Serenity is the top. And then this one I think is hilarious and um, Anybody with a pug or a dog has to have this fabric. I think it's hilarious. And the cats are so funny too. So we think that they turned out really well. They were made by Julie, who is our fabric buyer. And she, as I said, looked for many different tutorials, the burrito tutorial, and she came up with one. And then we're gonna link to that for you. So we'll do that. Um, on the side so you'll see it so I'm not going to show you how to make those but I just think you need three pieces of fabric they're very easy they're very quick fun I have friends who make different ones every year for a birthday or for a holiday or something like that and they pass them around and they're you know that that's what they give as gifts I think it's pretty fun all right so what I did was I worked with fabric bowls and these are several different kinds. I don't really have a pattern, which is none, nothing new to some of you guys, but I'm gonna walk you through how I made it. You need fabric, you need Peltex. So Peltex is this really thick piece of stabilizer made by Pelon, it's um, Pelon 70, I think is, is what the number is. Uh, so that's what's inside. You can use ends of your, your, you know, when we cut off our selvages, they're great. These I did quite a while ago where I was actually stamping and creating my own fabric. So this is actually with stamp pads. And then I couched. So you can take all of that uh, razzle and uh, funky, wonderful threads and textures, the cheesecloth and sari silk. So lots and lots of things to couch. And then this one, this one, I think I did not put Peltex in the middle. So this doesn't have the stability of the others. But I did paint the fabric. I did a little bit more zigzag. So um, just some great thread choices for you to use when you make them. Um, this is... Can the Peltex be used in the microwave? I am not sure. I think, if I remember correctly, everything must be cotton. So Peltex is a synthetic, so I would say no, it can't be. You can use cotton batting in these. We do have Jen, our um, shipping manager. She makes bowls that you can put in the microwave. And I think if I remember correctly, she said everything has to be cotton. So I would not use the Peltex. So, and then look at, Chris is working on a, a quilt and we'll, that's going to be in a future Facebook Live, but you can see that we coordinated. And the other thing that's really nice about these, is they're reversible. And honestly, they do not take much time at all. Here's one. These pieces, this is a 12 by 12 square made this size bowl and this size bowl. 
Okay, so that's 12 by 12. And that's classic foliage? Classic foliage is the fabric line that you've used here and here. Mm -hmm. So we do have that online. It's available to purchase. This size bowl, and you can see I used um, my Indian block printed fabrics, is a 10 by 10 square. Now, who has some orphan 10 by 10 squares in their stash? I'm sure that they're already cut, ready to go. So that would be easy. And then um, we have some, here's this pack of 10 by 10 that we have in the store. Let me turn them upside down so it's $45. You use two um, pieces. You could just, you can make bowls for all of your family and friends just with this pack. Then we have this one, it's called Forest Glade that can kind of be holiday as well as you really can keep it up a lot of the times but you know it depends do you want something that's a seasonal piece or do you want something that's all the time and then of course we have 12 by 12 or 10 by 10 sorry i'm getting my numbers wrong here from um, aboriginal fabrics which just make amazing bowls as well this is one of our favorite fabric lines this is a multicolor pack there's a red pack, I think there's a purple pack. So very, very fun, great things that make it very easy to create these. People are asking about your pattern, Junie. My pattern? Or your bowl. Okay, I'm gonna show you, no <laughs> pattern is necessary. No pattern. Okay, so this is a 12 by 12 piece. And I, I can't remember which collection this is, but we definitely have this as well. Um, leaves, mm, okay, it. we'll find it, we'll give you a link. And then this is uh, Dear Stella, also, it's got some great movement. So my pattern is literally 12 by 12, fabric, Peltex, fabric. Now, Pellon makes a product, this Pellon is sev Pellon 70. That means there's no fusible on either side. I tend to buy that one because I always use my own fusible. But Pellon also comes out with 71, which means it's one-sided fusible. Pel 72, which means it's two-sided fusible. But what I did here, and I didn't list this in your supplies, so I'll do that again. Fabric Misty Fuse is on here, and I fused my fabric to it. Then I have the Pell on 70. Then I put Misty Fuse and fuse this fabric. So I did use Misty Fuse. All right, so here's your pattern. 12 by 12, 10 by 10, that's it. Okay, now I am a Bernina girl. So I am using a 570, which has dual feed. So let me just, this is the first level where you can get the dual feed, which as a quilter and actually as a sewer of any kind, it's kind of nice. So it's got to come back here. And here I have this foot that's open and I do change this out and I do have a zigzag stitch plate. When I'm quilting, I have a single hole stitch plate, but when I'm doing a zigzag, you definitely want to not break needles you want to be able to switch okay so that's the larger here i have my feed dogs up all right so i have not you can i did stitching on the other bowls kind of the same concept as quilting you want to hold your pieces together but i didn't do that i'm going to show you what i would do on this one i use free motion a lot i have a bernina stitch regulator a bsr on my machine as well as i have a q20 so i have a 770 that personally is my machine and a q20 and I use the Bernina stitch regulator. That's what I recommend, that's what I love. But if you don't have that, or you don't have confidence in your free motion, which by the way, you get confidence the more you do it, and you have to practice before you get better, but I'm gonna do this with a straight stitch. So let's hope the demo gods are here and with us. Let's see. I'm gonna come down. 
So I use this green. You could use a pattern stitch. It's very easy to do that. And I'm just going to put a few things just holding my uh, pieces together here. And you can see I can make turns. My feed dogs are up. My feed dogs are not down, just like I would regular stitch. This is, these are absolutely fabulous machines. So the first Bernina I ever had was in 1978 when I went away to school. I had to have a sewing machine. It has a cutter on it. It just doesn't get any better than that. Now, if I was doing free motion, I would use the, the pattern in the fabric just to help me where I want to stitch. Now, if you, can you see what I did here was I kind of defined my bottom base and that's, I can make this as large or as small as I want. So the larger my base is, the shorter my sides are, okay? Smaller my base, my circle is, the um, taller my sides are. All right, so I'm gonna just freehand this. If you want, you can use a plate, um, you know, a cup and saucer that gives you an idea of how big you want your base to be. See how easy this is? This is just so, so easy. Oops. All right. Is there a reason why you use the dual feed instead of the walking foot? Um, no, actually, um, the, you could use either. So, the dual feed, I think, is um, fine because I have this fused down. The walking foot absolutely is totally necessary when you have batting in between here. This is, that keeps your three layers together and working evenly. This is a little bit different animal, the Peltex, so I think the dual feed was okay. Um, uh, so yeah, walking feet and dual feet are not the same thing and they have different purposes. Great question. Okay. I need a big pair of scissors. So I have my lines. Here's my line at the bottom. I did use the same, thank you. I did use the same thread top and bottom. Um, don't worry about my edges. Okay, there we go. All right, you ready for the rest of the pattern? Those of you who know me know this is pretty predictable. Okay, here's the rest of the pattern. See how precise and, and matching these, these triangles are that I'm cutting out of here. See how precise they are? There you go. We just eyeballed it. Now I can feel I have a little bit, so this, um, my 
fabric is a little bit longer than my Peltex, so I'm actually going to trim that. Kind of, a rotary cutter would be better. Okay, got it? Yeah, so, so I wanted to just make sure my edges are pretty close to where the Peltex is. And ideally, I would, I did trim the other ones. I did use a ruler. I know you find that funny, right? Um, okay. So you can see, you know, these are, are not the same. Now, in the days when I used to sell jewelry and do that, I would have used these as bases for jewelry, but um, you can also use these for pieces in your work that make it three-dimensional and stuff. So, needless to say, they don't get thrown out. All right, so I'm gonna go to a zigzag. The basic machines are a 5.5 millimeter width. Okay, so what that means and it, uh, I'm get, trying to get there. Okay, 5.5. Okay, see this number here? This is the width of my stitch. So most, um, a lot of machines out there now allow you to go to nine millimeter width. And that's what the advantage is, that I now can get a really nice big zigzag. And with Bernina, all I need to do is move that dial. Okay, this is, these machines are absolutely fabulous. So the other thing I can do is it, I don't have to have a satin stitch. I can make the distance between my stitch zigzags, I can determine if I want them really tight, which most of the time I don't use that, or I can give you a little bit of width here. Okay, so I've got nine. All right, so this is the hardest part. I promise you this is the hardest part, and you'll see how easy it is. All right, I am going to sew this part together. Ooh, this machine needs a little oil. And I do have a 90 needle in here. I did not say that before. So see, I'm, I'm holding it, I'm bringing it together. No pins. Love that cutter. Someone just asked if you only do one row of stitching. I do. Um, you don't have to. Sometimes um, and when I'm using a zigzag stitch, I will go back over it. You can um, make it thicker. It's personal preference. See how easy this is? This is so, so easy. My poor machine so, so needs oil. Okay, there we go. Isn't that great? It's so fun, it's so easy. Now, let's talk about the edges. I have these edges here. Most of the time, 
I just zigzag them. I would make my zigzag a little bit shorter. I would not necessarily use a nine millimeter width. Um, the other thing I did was I couched sorry silk. So I took some of this, which is our hand dyed sari silk with my Indian fabrics, and I just couched it onto the edge. And I left a little tail and added some beads. And then, and this one is, is reversible also. And I can have my beads inside the bowl or outside the bowl. So it worked, that was really fun. That worked really well. Then we have some fabulous holiday colors if you want to stick with the holiday so you could couch you could sew with any of this metallic you can use your zigzags with your metallic you can do your edging it's it, there's just a lot of different options this one you can see where i made more of a satin stitch i'm a little lazy now so i i don't make it as much of a satin stitch and this is a with a 5.5 millimeter with okay um, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna change this reduce it hmm, I think I was doing six six and a half and I'm just gonna do one section to show you see this is where I really want my fabric up against edge fabric just wrapped up there in my zigzag, which is still exactly what I want it to do. All right, and I didn't have my needle down. I usually do that. I usually have my knee lift. Let me grab that. So I can go around the whole thing. Now you can see I have, I probably could have done a better job with my fusible, but now you can see those things that go wrong and, and plan ahead. So my stitching here. So when we did the stitching and the curving and that type of stuff, then I would have, I should have trimmed my edges up against my pelon and then proceed it. So, eh, you know, it does make a little bit of a difference. I would do that. I'll probably, um, I don't know, I might put some sorry ribbon around the top or I might take some glamour, some wonderful glamour or something to fill that, that messy edge. Um, all right, questions so far? No questions? All right, how many bowls are you gonna make? One? Anybody gonna make at least one? Ellen said it's a good way to use up scraps fused to the pellon. Yes, yes, absolutely. They don't have to be one whole piece of solid fabric. You can collage them with fusibles. So yes, you can. Um, a couple other things we're not gonna get into directions, but just some ideas for you to think about. So these are just spools a piece of wire and some scraps of felted sweaters. So they just uh, will hang, oops. So you can see there's how the connection is and it's just in there and they hang. So these are our little felted trees that, that we've made here. And then um, our teacher, uh, Leslie Breyer, 
who is our resin teacher, made these wonderful pieces of resin. So the backgrounds are put in there and then resined over it to stay in place. They're old tins that are from, you know, cookie cutters or jelly, jello tins and that type of thing. So those are some options as well. And the resin, as I said, is great. It, it's uh, ice resin. We do have it online and it, it works. It's commercial grade. It works very nicely. All right. So everybody's ready to go buy their holiday fabric. I hope that you can you start sewing now. It's actually quite a relief to start now because then you start thinking about it and you get things done ahead of time. And um, we're not wrapping up unfinished gifts like I've done my entire life. <laughs> so. so someone actually commented that they would use their serger to finish the edges of yes. the bowls. Yes, I think the serger would be a great idea for sure. Um, and then you can also do some wonderful things with um, different threads with a serger as well. So there's um, ways that you can incorporate these decorative threads. So serger absolutely would be a great idea. All right. Thank you very much for participating in our India uh, charity event and making your donations. We hope everybody's excited about the doll that they won. We will continue to do our Facebook Lives for... Um, holiday gift giving over the next uh, month and into August. We hope you'll join us with those. You do, we do have holiday fabrics online ready to buy. So they are there. And remember when you purchase $50, the shipping is free. So that is for you to be aware of and, and that has continued and uh, there and it's an automatic uh, when you place your order. Thursday night at seven o'clock, we have our Facebook live selling event and we are going to um, have our treasure boxes return. So we have a mixed media treasure box and they are packed in um, cigar boxes. So we, this is already in packs. So we've packed it in tissue paper, which of course you can use. Um, the fabric is heavily Asian oriented, but this one is not so much. This is really more mixed media. So there's wire, there's little mini stamp pads. There's some pictures in here that I use, vintage game. There is also um, stock certificates, ledger papers, because of course you can't get enough ledger papers. There's uh, a little bit of fabric in there because we want you to challenge you. If you're definitely a paper person, we want to give you a little fabric to, um, to to get into that. And it's Tim Holtz fabric, so you know we haven't we haven't made you jump too far. Tim Holtz is uh, known for his wonderful um, papers and things. Then we we I am still assembling. I have this fabulous collection of vintage Japanese and the box that I'm working on today is working with silk. So these are gonna be scraps, but these are silk pieces from silk kimonos that you cannot get. So these are absolutely beautiful pieces and they will also be packaged. So that is, again, limited edition, Thursday evening, seven o'clock. We will start our live event, and we also are collecting, we do have some kimonos that are fully intact, and some other Asian-inspired items that we will have for you as well. So please join us. Find us on Facebook, Artistic Artifacts Creative Minds is our group. Please ask to join it. We'd love you to be part of that and shop with us at artisticartifacts.com. So thank you, happy holidays.